Hello, my wonderful friends. Meg is here back in the library. Chapter eight today. Oh, so good. Real quick, I got to touch on something so beautiful. So in this chapter, the fire scene, it was to me so suspenseful. And I like I didn't know it was happening. I was caught in it. Uh, my mind's going, who did it? What's going to happen? And just really caught up in it. Loving it. I, it was exciting. And then um, what I do when I do book club, I'll read it once just to enjoy it. Then the second time I go through, I, I do all my underlining. And the second time, it's, st it's still great, but it didn't hit me with that excitement. And it made me think there's, there's a few of you uh, that have already read it, you told me, but you're still here going along with it just because you love being a part of the community. And oh, I love you guys so much. Thank you for doing that. I love you being here so much. But you were excited for me and us that are reading it for the first time. And you're wanting to see our reactions. And now I get it, especially reading it twice in a row like I do. I'm starting to feel what you're feeling and the excitement of reading a book for the first time. Because it has that... It's still good the second, third, fourth time. Like, oh my God, picture Dorian Gray. I don't know how many times I've read. Always love it. But there's always that first time where you don't know what's going to happen. And there's that suspense, that mystery. And it got me thinking about what if we could see our lives like that instead of worrying, right? Enjoy the mystery. Enjoy the adventure. See it as a gift of reading the book for the first time. My friends, and when I thought of that, it, it just it brought me such a peace. And I, I wanted to share that with you. And, and you know, another thing, it's funny how books bring up all these feelings and, and, and thoughts. And I was thinking about death. <laughs> and uh, I've been watching a lot of near-death experience shows on YouTube. And, and a lot of them have a common theme that they're not scared of death anymore. And so we shouldn't be scared to live because we're afraid to die. And matter of fact, one guy said something that really stuck with me. And he was saying that his near death experience and seeing death has made him brave to live because now he's excited about what's to come. He's not fearing what's to come. He's not thinking it's less than what he has now. He's, he knows it's better than. It's perfect perfection. It's heaven. It's good. You feel good. It's a paradise, you know? And uh, isn't that beautiful? Doesn't that kind of change how, how we think? Where death isn't a punishment. It's a release from these bodies. These bodies are fun. They can be an adventure. They can be a story. My God, you can write your own story today if you wanted to. You could go to a de deserted island, run around naked, and eat coconuts and fish. You can make your own adventure. My friends, it's amazing to me. And then don't fear death. Right? We, we come from good spirit. We're made of good spirit. We're going to return to good spirit. If there's any advice I could give, which I try to do, is just live good. Live your true nature, your true name. Don't fall into the lie and illusion. Be the love, be the peace, be the joy. Don't, don't fall into the greed and the hate and the war and, and that stuff. Don't be bad energy. Be good energy. Be what you are. All right. Chapter eight. Anyone still with me? <laughs> We're four minutes in and I get off on these rabbit trails. Uh, if you are, do me a favor. Let me know. Uh, the interaction is what I love from this. So Mrs. Radley died that winter, but her death caused hardly a ripple in the neighborhood. The, the neighbors seldom saw her except when she watered her flowers. Jim and I decided that Boo had got her at last, but when Atticus returned from the Radley house, he said she had died of natural causes to our disappointment. <laughs> they were wanting this big story that I'm sure they could uh, add to their you know, their little game they play of reenacting the Radley household. So they were disappointed that she wasn't murdered and stuffed up the chimney or something. 
Uh, Scout awoke, looked out the window, and nearly died of fright. Her screams brought Atticus from his bathroom, half-shaven. The world's ending, Atticus. Please do something. I dragged him to the window and pointed. And, uh, no, it, it, it's fine, he said. It, it's just snowing. They had never seen snow in the south like that. Jim asked Atticus, would it keep up? Jim had never seen snow uh, but he knew what it was. Atticus said he didn't know any more about snow than Jim did. Uh, I, I think, though, it's awfully watery like that. It'll, it'll turn to rain. And so um, Jim gets an idea. He wants to make a snowman. And uh, it, Atticus says, I doubt there's going to be enough snow even for a, a snowball. And uh, it's just cute. Scout walks out and sticks her tongue out into the air to try to catch a snowflake. And uh, Jim says, no, don't eat it, Scout. You're wasting it. Let it come down. <laughs> That's how little bit of snow there is. He doesn't want to waste one flake. And so he gets an idea. They go across to, uh, to start getting snow from the neighbor's yards and collecting it to bring it over to theirs. While they're in route, uh, it said Mr. Avery accosted them. His pink face and his big stomach below his belt. This is how kids' minds work. They're getting inspiration for their snowman here. <laughs> oh, and then Mr. Avery tells them that uh, Maycomb County hasn't seen uh, snow like this, and it's bad children like you that make the seasons change. Now, Scout reflected that if this was the reward for sin, then there's something to say for sin, you know. Oh, her brain scares me. Um, so now they're at uh, Miss Maudie's house getting the snow. She gives him a peach basket to get it and haul it off. Says it's a slushy operation. This got me thinking again. Is is here we're talking about childhood I, it took me back to my cousins. It, my childhood, I have a lot of rem memories of my grandma and grandpa's house. And my cousins lived around there. And a lot of my friends around their house. And so we'd kind of gather there. And uh, a lot of our adventures. And well, my cousin, Narcy, was my all-time favorite cousin. And so as I got older, uh, I was driving now. I, I had moved up out of San Bernardino to Lake Arrowhead, California. And my cousin was still down in San Bernardino. San Bernardino w was hot, you know, and, and then just 30 minutes up because it was pretty steep drive up the mountain. 30 minutes up, there was snow. And so I got an idea. I'm going to fill the whole back of my pickup truck with snow, take it down to Narcy so he can make a snowman. And I thought, oh, he's going to love this. So I, I'm, I worked my ass off shoveling up into my lifted pickup truck. And uh, I mean, I filled the back with snow and then. As I got down to San Bernardino, it's hot. I get down into the yard. Their yard kind of dipped down into their grass in the front yard. So I, I back down in it. And now it's been snowing up in Lake Arrowhead. It's been raining down in San Bernardino. So the, the ground is very muddy, very soft. So my truck is already starting to kind of sink in the yard. Now I'm throwing more snow off. Takes me a lot of work, a lot of effort because I love my cousin so much. Finally get off, but I do notice it's melting quickly. They're not home yet. I'm hoping, oh God, I hope they get home soon so he can make a snowman before it melts. Now I have to try to get up out of the yard. I'm spinning. <laughs> I am leaving ruts in their grass, their beautiful front lawn. And I'm zzzz, all the way up and out of it. I look back, I'm like, oh my God. I was like a foot deep four-wheel drive trench dug up out of the yard. I'm all, well, they'll love the snow though. Anyway, I call later that evening. Cousin, did you see the snow? He's all, what snow? I'm all, I left a huge pile of snow in the front lawn. He's all, you bastard. Dad is so pissed right now. All we saw was mud. There was no snow and two huge just gulfs of tire prints through our yard. I'm all, oh, maybe don't mention that to him. But we still laugh about that to this day. And today, my favorite cousin, I'm glad I was so nice to him. He works in the music industry and he spoils my kids. Like when a, one of their favorite bands 
comes to their town. He gets some free tickets, uh, gets them behind backstage to meet the bands and stuff. And he just spoils them. I just love that guy. Okay, so now speaking of mud, Jim's making a snowman, but there's not enough snow for just snow. So he makes a mud man first. He builds the shape of Mr. Avery <laughs> out of mud and then puts snow around it. And then like the sticks for arms and all this stuff. And now Atticus is just a proud papa when he gets home and sees it. He says, uh, Jim, I will never worry about what you'll be, what will become of you. You will always have an idea. But then Atticus kind of steps back. This cracks me up. Squints his eyes looking at the snowman. And then he grins and starts laughing. And he says, you know, we're going to get sued here. You need to tone that down. That You can't be making characters of our neighbors. He knew that was Mr. Avery. So Jim gets another idea. He goes and gets uh, Miss Maudie's hat and puts her straw hat on and stuff, try to cover it up. And now Miss Maudie realizes uh, her hat's missing, looks across, sees it, starts yelling. Mr. Atticus goes over to try to calm her down. Uh, Atticus strolled over to Miss Maudie's sidewalk where they were engaged in arm-waving conversation, in argument. He's trying to tell her, let the kids be, her hat will be fine. And she's saying, you ain't raising them right. <laughs> you know, and just, oh, let's see. Now, here's where that missed that that adventure began that that like suspense i guess is the word i'm looking for i i get i got wrapped up in the story here uh atticus runs in wakes the kids up get dressed and uh there's fire spewing from miss Maudie's windows um jim put his arm around me uh ain't time to worry you know and um trying to keep her calm. They're trying to stay warm. They're standing by Mr. Radley's house. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, this part was funny here. <laughs> Mr. Avery, remember our snowman inspiration? Uh, he's up throwing stuff out the upstairs window, trying to save furniture. And then they're telling him, get out of the house. It's burning down. So he tries to go out the window. His little snow shape ain't made for going out windows and he gets stuck and everyone's freaking out. Finally, he pops loose and falls into Miss Madri's shrubs, which I find hilarious. Um, they, they get back home and uh, Atticus noticed that she, a scout has a blanket wrapped around her and uh, wonder like, where did, where did that come from? Uh, and, uh, I, I guess Boo Radley. Now, did did you guys read? I read this twice. And I'm not sure. Did Jim see Boo Radley put the blanket around her? I, I think so. I read it. I, I'm not sure. Did, what did you guys get from that? But they're standing by the gate. Boo Radley came out and put a blanket around her shoulders to keep her warm. So I, we're starting to see a different side of Boo Radley than the kid's imagination, right? He's giving them gifts. Kept her warm when it's cold out. Love that. Oh, I, I underlined this here. Atticus made him hot cocoa after their uh, little, you know, traumatic event there. I thought that was that's kind of what we do here uh, on our book club. We love our hot cocoa and marshmallows. Uh, this Miss Maudie cracks me up. So Jim and Scout go over there, you know, see how she's doing, give their sorries. And she's got a smile on her face. It, she's actually, she's fine with it. She's saying, you know, I would have burnt this place down years ago, this old cow barn. I never did like it. Now it's got more room for my, uh, my flowers, right? She loves being out in her yard. She doesn't like being in the house. Uh, said she would have done it herself if she wouldn't have got arrested for it. Um, talks more about just some community things here that I love uh even though the streets they got their arguments and uh their differences there's, there's still a community and uh miss stephanie takes in uh miss Maudie and and now miss Maudie's gonna make a cake here for uh the neighborhood and and for poor uh forgetting the names here who's the snowman guy for <laughs> anyway making a cake for snowman guy that got stuck and got hurt uh says when we left her, she was still laughing and chuckling. Jim said he didn't know what was the matter with her. That was just Miss Maudie. So, I mean, you really see 
the characters. You know this Miss Maudie now. You get to know this Avery. Uh, you know, he'll step up for the neighbors, risk his own life for them, uh, but also very superstitious, thanks to the weathers uh, by children's sin, you know, and stuff. And Oh, this book, just great. It's, and it has, I have fun as I'm reading it. I find myself, I stop and I get lost in my mind, all the different adventures uh, with me and my cousins and my friends, you know. I, are you guys experiencing that also? I know a few of you have shared some of your childhood stories. I love hearing them. Please share them with me. All right, guys, we'll see you for chapter nine. I love, love, love you.